restrictions, our commitments are growing. While this is a great step towards returning to a sense of a new normal, it is also important to remember the lessons we learned about ourselves over the last year. We have to remember to prioritize our self-care, to relearn how to cope with the new stress and anxiety as we head back to work, school, and wherever else our daily lives take us. I have made this video to share a number of ways to manage anxiety around these newfound stressors using traditional Chinese medicine as a guide. Be sure to like and subscribe for more free and enriching content. And if you ring the notification bell, you'll find that I publish new videos every Monday uh, for your daily or weekly dose of traditional Chinese medicine. So let's go outside and get started. As you already know, today's video is focused on bringing some practical and easy tools into your toolbox to combat stress and anxiety. The main objective here is to rewire our brain from anxious emotions. Historically, anxiety is what kept our sympathetic nervous system in a state of hyper-awareness to protect us from physical and other harms to our bodies and our livelihoods. Contrast that with today's day and age and these emails and these phone calls and assignments and deadlines, whatever your stressors may be, our brains are still processing these incoming factors as threats to our livelihood, which is not the case. So I'm gonna give us some tools to really hone that in and use anxiety as fuel rather than something that carries us downwards. I have found that with work or school or whatever your stressors may be, the first and easiest tool to rely on is that which is already inside of ourselves. To start, let's watch a quick video from Dr. Anna, which I pre-recorded at one of my acupuncture sessions just a few days ago. Dr. Anna is a professor and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine here in the city. She also, aside from providing healthcare for her patients, leads a CME series for healthcare practitioners, doctors, and physicians to learn more about the practical applications of functional anatomy. I have linked all of this below, but let's go ahead and watch Dr. Anna's quick tip. So tip on breathing, if your breath uh, ratio between your inhale and exhale is one to one, it's going to have a very balancing effect on your nervous system. If you are exhaling twice as long as your inhale, so you're at a one to two ratio for your breath, it's going to have more of a calming effect. It will tap into your parasympathetics a little bit more. Inhalation is very sympathetic. Exhalation is very parasympathetic. So if they're even, you're going to balance. If your parasympathetics are emphasized, it will have an overall calming effect. So it's a tip to get you through the day. Okay. So as Dr. Anna explained, we're going to be focusing on lengthening and expanding our exhales. To do this, I want to introduce an exercise called S breathing. So you can do this sitting upright, you can do it standing in your office or at your desk. And if you have a little bit more space, I suggest trying it this way. Find a soft surface and enter into Sphinx pose. Take a slow, deep inhale through your nostrils. Focus your attention to expanding the outer sides of your rib cage as you inhale. Hold for three to five seconds. Now when we exhale, we are going to exhale with a hissing sound or an S or S sound, as if your body is a deflating balloon. Only allow yourself to exhale for up to 10 to 15 seconds. 
you do not want to force the exhalation, but rather slowly allow the air to seep out from your lungs. You'll notice your exhale is significantly longer than your inhale, thus enabling your parasympathetic nervous system to kick in, providing immediate relief. Now that we have explored the Western reasoning for breath work, let's look at it through the lens of traditional Chinese medicine. So if you watched my previous YouTube video, I broke down the notion of qi or da qi, which comes from the air that we breathe in. To take it one step further, the Chinese character for qi is actually derived from that of air and water. When we breathe or move, we are actively moving qi throughout our body. However, this self-regulated movement can become stagnant, especially when we find ourselves sitting at a desk for several hours during the day. Using this S breathing technique is one way we can move stagnant lung qi in and out of our bodies. The second tool for coping with anxiety or manifestations of stress is, as you already likely know, exercise. But again, if you don't have the time or the space, I have found this practice to be an easy way to curb the stress. In the first term of my program pursuing traditional Chinese medicine, I had the honor of practicing Qigong under Qigong master Sherry Zhang. Now, while I am no expert in the practice of Qigong, I did learn the introductory series called Ba Duan Jin, which also translates to the eight brocade sequence. I have always been interested in slow movement exercises like yoga, but that has been morphed into today's Western constructs of society. Um, my thoughts on that will be for another video. <laughs> But coming back to Qigong, I really like that it's something that you can use anywhere. You could do it at your desk, you could just stand up for a moment, you don't need a mat, and it can be done by practically anyone at any age. Aside from its historical and traditional practice, Qigong has also been systematically proven to improve quality of life, improve quality of sleep, reduce and regulate the heart rate and systolic and diastolic blood pressure, as well as increase hand grip strength. So it's really great for the elderly population especially. Here are two movements from the Ba Duan Jin series that I have personally found to be beautifully effective at reducing stress and continuing to reground the qi as I move through my day. In this first movement, we are going to separate heaven and earth to regulate stomach and spleen qi. Begin with hands hovered over the abdomen, palms facing towards the torso. Start to slowly lift your left hand towards the sky while your right hand moves towards the ground. Your left palm should follow your torso and begin to open towards the sky flat once at the top. The right palm will move downwards and lay flat facing the ground. Practice this movement at least six times at a slow pace to move and regulate the chi within the middle jiao, or the middle of your abdomen. In TCM, while the spleen governs transport and transformation of the purest essence and chi upwards, the stomach governs the downbearing of turbid chi. Failure of these regulating movements can lead to chi stagnation. This simple and effective movement can help to clear and regulate imbalances in either organ and their complementary functions. The next movement we are going to practice is meant to help strengthen and relieve liver chi. In TCM, the liver governs free coursing and stores the blood. Impairment of free coursing can lead to first deficiency of the liver and finally liver young rising, which includes feelings of emotional distress and anxiety. It is commonly said that around midterms or times of major deadlines, one can often experience liver young rising. To dispel and strengthen our liver chi, we are going to begin with our knees slightly bent, fists by our sides at our rib cage. Begin by pushing out the left hand so that the fist faces your right side. Begin to turn your wrist so that it faces the left and open the hand with fingers spread far apart, palms facing away from the body. We will now turn the hand to the left, and as we do so, tuck the thumb into the palm with the pinky and corresponding fingers to follow. 
pull the hand back into the side of your rib cage slowly and repeat the same movement with your right hand. Again, with this movement, it is suggested to practice at least six times to strengthen and tonify the liver. If Qigong interests you as a practice that you would like to explore and pick up, I suggest using the link below for a full series of Ba Duan Jin Qigong. Please note that I am not an expert, nor am I claiming to be. Those two pieces of the Ba Duan Jin sequence have just been really wonderful and life-changing at providing me with some tools to reground and balance my wandering mind. Another trick I learned from a doctor of TCM over at the Unova Center, which is a female and fertility focused clinic here in New York City, is a way to downregulate qi, especially good for nausea and sensations of heartburn, which can come with stress. All you're going to do is you're going to find the breastbone and you're just going to swipe downwards like this. This is also going to help move the qi downwards out of the upper jaw, into the middle jaw, down to the lower jaw. And so you're basically just gonna go down to your belly button as many times as you need. I would say about 30 seconds of this has me feeling beautiful. <laughs> One more practice that you can try is by rubbing right here on your sternal notch. If you just rub it like that downwards in repetitive strokes, you'll also find that you'll be triggering your mind into a state of parasympathetic activity. This is also working on an acupuncture meridian for stress and anxiety relief. The next tool I wanted to discuss was the 24 hour cycle of qi, which is essentially a time clock in Chinese medicine that qi flows through the 12 organs or the 12 meridians in our body. It's going to allow each organ to function at its peak during a two hour sequence in a daily repetitive clock. I will do another video about this system but for now, I just wanted to share that ideally we should be going to bed around 10, 30, 11, and then waking up between five and seven for optimal functionality throughout the day. It's also recommended that if you can, you take a small nap in the afternoon at the level of like high yang, meaning like 2 p.m. or so. But if you don't have that time, no problem. I'm here to tell you just a few tools for better sleep. Now, before I go on, let's discuss the physical manifestations of stress and anxiety. You may find yourself having symptoms of clenched fists, maybe a tighter jaw, um, poor posture with the shoulders rolled forward and the neck dipped forward, especially as we sit in front of a computer all day. And so to address poor sleep, and better our breathing habits, I wanted to introduce the concept of mouth taping. I'm gonna run and grab my mouth tape really quickly. Be right back. Okay, so I have been doing this for about six months or so, and I have found that it significantly improves the quality of my sleep when I'm asleep. I do wanna go ahead and say that everything I'm introducing to you in this video is not sponsored. So this is just me promoting other items and products that I have really found to be useful. When I originally started using mouth tape, I was actually just using micropore tape that you can actually pick up from like a CVS or your local pharmacy. And then before that, I actually even tried some painter's tape because I really just wanted to see if it works and how. Once I kind of saw the benefits in my own jaw tension and my own sleep, I decided to upgrade to this um, Somnifix brand. You can get it on Amazon and I've included the link down below. This is basically really lovely because I'll go ahead and take one out for you. Um, it comes in a pack of like 28, so it's about a month's supply. All right, so it opens just like this and literally looks like a little mouthpiece. And you'll see that right here, there's like a little hole. So 
if you're a little bit nervous and you're new to the whole mouth breathing thing, um, still getting used to it, there is a little hole here just in case if you need to breathe um, out of your mouth for any reason in the middle of the night, maybe you're congested or you have sleep apnea, whatever the case may be, that little hole is there to give you a little bit of sense of relief. I do want to go ahead and say super quickly that if you do struggle with sleep apnea or any other sleep disorders, I would always talk to your physician before trying out something like this, but for me this has been a game changer. I did want to read off just a few uh, health benefits of mouth taping so that you can kind of see why I have implemented this. So it is going to allow your nostrils to lubricate the air that you're intaking and prevent the sinuses from drying out. Also really good for bringing in the purest of pure chi into your lungs. The next um, thing that you do, like I said, it's going to lubricate and make the air you breathe more humid. So if you struggle with asthma or any other breathing issues like I do, such as allergies, then this is again going to help regulate that air coming into your body and really lubricating it and making it better for your lungs. It's also going to help balance out the pH levels in your mouth, preventing dental decay, dry mouth, and gingivitis. It's going to increase your intake of nitric oxide, which is a crucial for brain function, um, cardiovascular function, and overall blood oxygen levels. And then lastly, it's also going to decrease your chance of snoring. So all of these are going to lead to less tension, meaning better sleep overnight from those hours of roughly 11 till about 5 to 7 a.m. when we should ideally be waking up according to the 24-hour cycle of chi. Okay, on to the last little bit of this video for anxiety and stress relief. I wanted to focus on poor posture, head and neck tension. So the first thing I wanted to introduce was just the concept of a simple neck massage. So what you can do is if you go to the back of your neck, you're just going to start between the shoulder blades and kind of scrape upwards into the part of where your skull begins. And that's really just going to help bring more blood flow against the motion of gravity towards your brain, really increasing focus and concentration. It's also just going to act as a little massage, which is just naturally going to de-escalate your stress levels. The next um, kind of tip I wanted to provide is when you're doing that neck massage, maybe trying something like this, it's Battle Bomb. Um, Battle Bomb is really good for uh, essentially just bringing menthol and cooling products to areas to reduce inflammation and really, again, just relieve that stress. This is a Chinese liniment oil um, and balm. It's gonna include 12% menthol, wintergreen, camphor. Um, so those are really going to help address a lot of that tension. You can also get them with CBD. Mine has CBD in it just to further reduce that inflammation in my neck. Okay, so the last little tool that I use for stress relief is actually this guy right here. It is a cervical neck um, I guess support system. So I got it off Amazon from the recommendation of my chiropractor. And essentially what you're gonna do is you just kind of lay backwards on this. Your neck rests right here. Do it for about 10 minutes and just practice maybe some of that S breathing while you're doing it. And that's really just gonna help realign um, your spine and your neck so that there's less tension and less pressure on your neck, especially when we're sitting and staring at our phones and computers all day. Okay guys, I lied. I have one more small tip for you that is pretty cool. It's going to be on the lung channel and I'm just gonna teach you a little point right here. So right here on the radial side or the thumb side of your wrist, we have this little kind of protrusion called our styloid process. And right there is actually going to be lung seven, which is the command center for the head and neck. So if you are experiencing any head or neck tension, I actually recommend just applying a little bit of pressure, massaging it right there. And again, that's gonna stimulate the meridian and bring the chi out of your head and neck and really just move it around and help reduce a lot of that tension. 
Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it does help you bring a little bit of stress and anxiety relief into your daily lives. If you decide to try any of the tools or the products that I recommended or suggested, I've linked them all in the description box down below. Again, none of these were none of these were sponsored and so all of this is just me promoting other people's tools that i think are super effective in managing our stress and anxiety so let me know if you end up trying anything i'd love to hear it in the comments down below and um, other than that i think it's all over for today i will see you oops <laughs> next week bye <laughs>